college football corner brought to you by myself because Reggie is not here. He is mm -hmm. on vacation. Uh, he will be back next weekend. Um, why do people think it's a great idea to FaceTime me when I'm doing radio? They want it, they could just just direct them and send them a link to the YouTube live stream. That's a great idea. I'm going to do that right now. This is your um, message reply. Let's see. Twitch.tv slash Dallas. Dallas. Fan. Cam. Yeah. I stumbled. Hold on. Dallas fan. Cam. This is horrible radio. But. You're plugging. You're plugging and you're technically responding to them. So. That's why you made it here, Blake. You're a smart hey, guy. Hey, you're a smart try. guy. Okay, so where do you want to start? Do you want to talk about TCU and their defensive coordinator? Do you want to talk about a couple of big draft declarations? Give me the draft. Okay, so we had, uh, he literally said, are you at home after I sent him that? Just tap the link. Okay. Um, so Not everybody's a smart cookie. We, we've had a couple of different draft declarations, not many huge names, but a couple of big ones. If uh, any of you out there want to feel old, Frank Gore Jr. has declared for the draft. <laughs> Um, uh, so that is something, uh, out of Ole Miss, but we did have the first big quarterback domino to fall, which is Drake May out of North Carolina. Drake um, I think Drake, May. I think Drake is a great quarterback name. If we're being honest, I can't, it's all right. I can't tell you why, but probably because it hasn't really been done before. We haven't had a great Drake play quarterback yet. We've got so. a great, a decent receiver out in Atlanta. Right? Yeah, That's but nobody name, right? nobody Drake throws London. to him. So yeah. nobody throws to him. But uh he's ranked number five overall in CBS Sports's draft prospect rankings. He's in the top five in most people's. Uh he's considered the number two quarterback by most behind USC's Caleb Williams, but there is potential for him to be selected even higher. Um in a recent mock draft from NFL draft analyst Chris Trapasso, May went number one overall to the Chicago Bears. Uh not happening. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's a fair case to be made. I I I I I've been on this, and we're not gonna we're not getting to a Bears rant, but I don't think the Bears are drafting a quarterback. I'll just keep it as short as that. I think they're trading back, getting a receiver, building up the O line. They're not. I don't think they're drafting a quarterback, man. I think they are. I think only time will tell, really. Like if Justin Fields wins out and the fan base loves him, obviously, and if he like loses out and looks terrible, this is a rare chance to get your guy. Um, then you got no one around him, and you're in the same spot, though. That's my point. People keep getting in love with these guys. We just saw them with all this talent in college. You go draft Caleb Williams, you got nothing around him. Okay, cool. What are you going to do? I'd rather have Justin Fields and, and have Malik Neighbors or number 18 and have an old lineman rather than trade all They're that. running out of time with Justin Fields. All right, I Personally, personally, I would trade Justin Fields to Atlanta. But I think Justin Fields is going to be better in the next three years than we're going to get out of Caleb and Drake May. Personally, I think they're a little overhyped. They're running out of time with them is my point. Like, Give them to Atlanta. If, if you're going to make a move away from him, you got to do it now because this top quarterback class is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You you can mm -hmm. make your choice, especially mm -hmm. if they maintain the number one overall pick and you're like, who is he going to have to throw to or whatever? They got a lot of cap space. Mm -hmm. So go out there and sign some free agents. I don't know off the dome any big free agent wide receivers Mike Evans. or whatever. Yeah, Mike Evans. See, there you go. You're already making it work. You're out here just like changing your own discourse in the course of like 30 seconds or less on everything you say I'm right just, now. I, and I, it's awesome. I understand. Because the, it makes me sound smart. I understand the options that are out there. And then there's versus what I would actually do. I just wouldn't trade Justin Fields because I don't think Kayla Williams is going to be some godsend that everyone thinks he is and going to save the Bears franchise. <laughs> that's just that's just that's just what's not going to happen. Twole Vader is on your ass saying Broad say? Broadus knows how to work the Twitch. Come on, <laughs> that's, that's a double good one. shots fired that's to the birthday one. boy and to the fan phenom. That's, that's a good crazy. one. That is crazy. I mean, it, I'll figure it out. <laughs> You better. I was going to say, can you show me? You're going to make ops before you make friends here and fans. I, I love, I see the messages on the Twitch. I just don't, I don't know. You the, make uh, an account and then you click send a message and you type and you hit chat. Okay. Usually in most of the Twitches when I'm watching like Call of Duty, I just I just watch. I don't ever try to interact with the chat. I just watch. Well, so. now you're the one on the other end. You're usually watching people I, perform. Yeah. Now you are the one performing. Am I? Yes. I, I think that's a stretch. <laughs> hey, I'm you're hosting a radio show on 100,000 watts, Blake. Is that what's happening right now? Wow. Drake May. <laughs>
Um, I don't even know where to go with this anymore. This is incredible. Is Drake May the answer, Alec? Answer that question. You know who he might be the answer for? Who? Two teams that come to mind that are not the Chicago Bears. The New England Patriots and the New York Giants. Because they're on the hook for one more year with Daniel Jones, who tore his ACL and is done for this season. But uh, even if they bring him back in 2024, Drake May could be their heir to I mean, the throne. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're forgetting they got Tommy Cutlets. <laughs> they don't need hey, Drake May. You know what? They got no, the, oh, hey, my gosh. It's, it's not disrespect to Tommy DeVito because someone else is going to pay him more. <laughs> That's how much I love him. He's going to get himself a payday this offseason because he was an undrafted rookie, so he's only got one year on the books. Tommy DeVito has won every game he has started at set for against your Dallas Cowboys, so he might, have the, he might have the greatest Lynn Sanity rant run ever. I mean, he's not a terrible quarterback. It's just kind of funny, just his whole aura. So I'm sure that Saying a lot Tommy of Tommy teams... DeVito has an aura in 2023 is not something I expected <laughs> you to say. But the funny thing is, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so those are two teams that come to mind with Drake May. Of course, we're going to see the other dominoes fall mm -hmm. with the other big quarterbacks announcing their declarations soon. But another one that has intrigue factor, and honestly, I've seen people already make the argument for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know if he would be there, though. Uh, Oregon center Jackson Powers Johnson has declared for the draft. And Who? I didn't hear what you said. I, I'm not saying who. I really didn't hear what you said. I was re, I was trying to understand you, the chat. I just didn't hear the name. You, you know, said. it's an audio medium, right? Uh, Oregon <laughs> center jo Jackson okay. Powers Johnson. Yes, okay. he has two last names. Gotcha. Uh, he has a year of eligibility <laughs> remaining. Uh, there was a chance among Oregon circles, people believing that he might stick around. Ultimately, he does not. Uh, but he was spectacular in 2023. He mm -hmm. had first team all Pac-12 honors for his efforts. Additionally, the Oregon offensive line was a finalist for the Joe Moore Award, which is given to the best O-line in college football. And Powers Johnson finished the season with the highest pass blocking, run blocking, and overall PFF grades of any center in FBS, which made him a PFF All-American. So, wow, didn't go to Colorado's O-line? <laughs> <sighs> That's... It's just sad. It's just very, very sad. <laughs> no, shout out to him. Oregon had a lot of unsung heroes that you wouldn't expect that kind of showed up and why their team was so good was their great O-line. So this is a guy that definitely can make an impact from day one from whatever team he gets drafted to. And a lot of teams are looking for O-line help. I think it's very underrated. I think a lot of teams, a lot of people watching like, hey, my team has Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson. They should be good. And you're like, does it matter? We've seen it at the Jets. They got Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers. Doesn't matter how good your team is if you can't get the ball to them. So these guys, there's a reason that teams put so much draft capital into the O and D line. The trenches is where the game is won. And then some deciders can be some guys on the outside. But if you can't get the ball to them, doesn't matter. So that's a guy that'll probably be a, uh, you know, use some high draft capital on getting Jackson Powers Johnson. What a name too. Yeah, that's a great name for a center, for an offensive lineman at all. That's fantastic. And I don't think I mentioned from uh, that little bit of information that he was also an AP All-American this season. Uh, first team. So he has been incredible this season. He's going to be great in the NFL, I hope, because of the name alone. Two last names on the back of a center's jersey. Give me all of that. Uh, speaking of AP All-American, those teams were put out. And it's pretty much all of the people you would expect on yep. the first team. Jaden Daniels at quarterback, Ollie Gordon the second, uh, the Oklahoma State running back that is now living in infamy because of his bleep Texas hype mm -hmm. before not doing anything yep. at all. Then slamming Texas. his helmet, you know, not not the greatest performance, but uh, Texas defense will do that to you. Yeah, that'll happen. Zach Zinter, uh, despite getting injured late in the season out mm -hmm. of Michigan, uh, that's going to be a fantastic player that will play a lot of Sundays in mm -hmm. his life. Brock Bowers at tight end, no shocker. That dude out of Ohio State that plays wide receiver, mm -hmm. not going to say his name. Malik. Uh, Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Travis Hunter out of Colorado at mm -hmm. all purpose. Uh, lots of SEC representation mm -hmm. throughout there and the defense as well. Seeing uh, some Alabama and Georgia sprinkled in throughout the defense. Uh, and there's a Jalen Green. No, not the one that plays in Houston for the Rockets. Now to James Madison getting some love. There you go, JMU. JMU. And then probably the best name in all of co college football made the first team defense. Chop Robinson? At cornerback. No. Oh, Kool-Aid. Yeah, Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. There's some good names. We got Chop Robinson, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Jared Verse, Dallas Turner. And then the, what's the tackle's name? That's out of... Um, 
out of Penn State. Oh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that oh, name. I'm, uh, I'm going to butcher Fishanu. that. Fishanu. Say his first name. Olu. No, it's longer than that. It's, <laughs> it's a, He goes by Olu. <laughs> but what's... Uh, I don't even have it in front of me. I just know he goes by Olu. <laughs> I'm not going to butcher that, but there's some crazy... It's just like Vita Vea. It's not even close to Vita Vea. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just what he was able to like put it down to a humane level. Yep. Just, yep. just so the media won't butcher it. Yep. Because... That he knows we will. That's one thing we, we are will. We will butcher a lot of names, even my own. I've, I've, I've. Have you ever butchered your own name? Like yes. saying it to someone, like yeah. introducing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hello, you know, I'm. Um, oh, what is my name again? Isn't it amazing how <laughs> you can talk for a living and still sometimes suck? At it talking? happens because our yeah. brains just shut off. We we run this train of four <laughs> hours of talking. <laughs> <laughs> like gonna, right there. I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> thank God it's 9 o'clock. Um, so, I, I oh mentioned Lord. TCU's defensive coordinator. Um, I just want you to know that we probably need a candle in here because it just it just feels like the juju is off now. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me you ripped one. No, no. I <laughs> promise you I have not because I would have moved microphones or something. Uh, but I did mention TCU's defensive coordinator. Uh, ended up getting fired, and I totally lost the DUI that I had. What? Like, why well, you said he got fired? I was just guessing why he got fired. No, because he sucks at his job. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you immediately go to felon? Because, because we just had a purple team whose OC got in trouble with the Minnesota Vikings, right? That was that was the other day. The Minnesota Vikings OC. <laughs> that what? Yes. Okay, that, so that, I was that logic is so broken. Just, we had a purple team who had a coordinator. <laughs> I <laughs> got a D. That's exactly that where my mind went. TCU ended up firing Joe Gillespie after two seasons. Um, obviously, after the embarrassment in the national championship, and then a pretty terrible defense and going five and seven this season. Um, yeah, not great under TCU's defensive coordinator Joe Gillespie. So Sonny Dykes says, "I am not wasting any time." Uh, so what do they do? They hire a former head coach. Andy Avalos out of uh, Boise State got fired this season. Mm. Despite having a 22-14 and 14 overall record with the program, he got fired midseason. Uh, the Broncos went on to win the Mountain West Championship weeks, weeks after his departure, but he's on the younger side. He's only 42. He previously served as defensive coordinator at Oregon from 2019 to 2020, where he helped the Ducks capture back-to-back Pac-12 championships under former coach Mario Cristobal. So also um, a great name. Yeah. Crystal ball. Yeah. It, because you have the crystal ball, you know, mm. thing that goes on with recruiting. Does yes. crystal ball have the crystal ball? You know, you he probably used find it. Out next. He probably used that on one of his recruiting pitches. He probably did. You know, what do you think? Words the, are great. Who do you think is the best recruiter ever? Nick Saban? Probably. That's probably the easy answer. Yeah. That's the easy. That's the cop out answer. But uh, TCU will turn to Avalos to inject a spark in the defense. The Frogs defense with its 3-3-5 scheme under Gillespie was uh, no exception to the fact that they failed to find any consistency on the football field this season. Uh, there were already question marks after the defensive showings in last year's college football playoff. TCU allowed 110 points combined to Michigan and Georgia in those two matchups, and the concerns weren't quieted when Colorado and Coach Prime just marched in here Uh-oh. and passed for more than 500 yards against TCU in that 45-42 to 42 loss. Yeah, you don't want that. So, and TCU ended this season ultimately averaging 408 yards and 27.8 points allowed per contents marks that ranked 100th and 78th at the FBS level respectively. Yeah, they lost a lot of guys from that team that went to the national championship last year and we saw this natural progression of falling off and that's some guys usually get fired because of said falling off and we saw it and it got a lot of people hyped that Colorado was actually good and why I think they had their moment. It was more about how bad TCU's defense was and that's how you get out of a job. (laughs) <laughs> the truckrink.com text line is a fun place to be sometimes. I know how to read this one. Yeah. Uh, and some of them we can't read because of what you said a few minutes ago. Um, so there you have it. There's the college football corner for tonight. I'm just getting distracted at this point. This show is already off the rails.